Hey everybody, uh, this is Mrs. C, as usual, and I am coming to you today with uh, hopefully what is a intuitive, explorative, um, losing words, can't think, uh, video tutorial uh, on domain and range. And as you see with the worksheet that I have in front of you, this is a good example of the of the type of things that I'd like you to be able to understand with regard to domain and range, but there's a little bit of extra I thought I probably ought to mention uh, to you before we go uh, any further. So let's just go to the next page. We'll come back to you, Paige. I promise we'll be back. But for now, just a nice, clear, coordinate plane. Here's the deal, guys, you have to understand now. Domain refers to, let me pick a color for my domain. I guess I'll pick a nice green. Domain is referring to all of the values that you find on the x-axis. So what I've done is I have drawn a green line over our x-axis. That's our domain. So if you hear uh, a question asking you to identify a number in the domain, <coughs> excuse me, or to state the domain of a given function, it's referring to all of these you know, values here and all of the infinite values that I'm not marking because I just don't have the time. <laughs> anyway, um, these are all your domain values. So uh, the x values, that's, that's how I remember it. The domain are the numbers on the x-axis. Now, let me do one more for you. We are going to be asked to identify the range. The range, and of course I'm going to use red here because it seems like a, I'm not trying to be Christmassy. I'm just trying to be contrasty. So our range are the numbers that are on our y-axis. Hard to spell and talk at the same time for me. Okay, here we are. So if I ask you to identify numbers um, of the would give me the range of numbers or identify if the number is in the range of a given function, then I'm talking about the y-axis. And so now I'm talking about all of these values, the positives, talking about the negatives. Okay, now that seems pretty straightforward, right? I, and actually, sometimes you get a little confused because it is so simple. It really is that simple. So let's I think for a minute of a line. I'm going to draw a line and I'm going to have that line. I'm going to do my best. I'm not the best line drawer and I am going to actually stop this line. I'm not going to make this then. I can't call it a line, can I? I'm going to call it a line segment. So I'm going to stop my line and I'm going to ask you, can you identify all of the values, all of the numbers that fall within the domain of this line segment. So now I'm only talking about the domain. Now that's the green, right? I believe I said that was the x values. And so I'm trying to find where this line segment spans my green. And I'm going to do another line, this one. Trying to identify all the values that it's going to span this line. So. I want to go to maybe, let's say, the left side of the line right here. Now, I want to see how far did it make it on my x. Now, I'm going to come back up to the x-axis and watch what I do. I'm going to go from 0. Can you see me squiggling? And what I'm doing is I'm moving until I hit the spot. Oh, 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 i got to stop there. Why did I stop there? Because that is pretty much where my blue line stopped, right? It didn't go much further than this place on the x-axis. Now, what value is that place on the x-axis? Well, you know, I'm just gonna, I've covered all my lines. I can't really see. Let's, let's pretend it was two, four, six, eight, uh, 10, 12. Let's say that that was 12. Now, is it 12 or is it negative 12? Good one, it is a negative 12. Now, come back over to the center and do the same thing to the right and stop when your blue line stops. Now up here, this is where I have to stop. Let me do my imaginary line sooner. There. So that's where I gotta stop. 
Now, you don't have to make the sound effects, but I find it very helpful. Now, I did two, four, six. Say I went to six. I'm just counting my intervals by twos. So the domain of my blue line spans from negative 12 and including negative 12 all the way to positive 6, which we would write our domain. I would use a D, and I like to throw down a little colon, and then I would write my bracket, my negative 12, my comma, my 6, my bracket. That's my domain from negative 12 to 6. Now, if you've done interval notation and you've done the inequalities and you've done the compounds, then writing the domain in interval notation should be easy breezy. In fact, I find even easier than doing it in set notation. You might be asking yourself, self, how would I write that in set notation? Well, a little trickier, I find. I would write, I wouldn't write that, get rid of that. I would write my negative 12 on one side. I would write my 6 on the other. I would actually write a D in the middle to stand for my domain, and then I would do my less than or equal to symbols. That would be the set notation for the domain that ranges, well I shouldn't say ranges, should I, that, that spans from negative 12 to 6, all the values in the x-axis. You could also use an x because we're talking about x's, so why not? I think that's even better. I know some people... Any math people out there are probably wondering, why did you use a D? X is a lot better. I have to agree with you. Because they're my X values. Why wouldn't I use an X? I would. Okay, now, let's take a look, why don't we, at range. Now, let me clear up a little bit of this. I don't want to get rid of everything, but I don't want a lot of this stuff here. If I was going to ask you to identify the range of this function... You're going to do the exact same thing, but you're going to be looking at which axis? Exactly, you're going to be looking at the y-axis this time. Now, I'm going to do a little count this time. I didn't count my intervals before I drew all over them, so I want to do that this time. I'm going to be looking here at the y-axis. And so I do need to know... Where is that going to be going? What is that value? Let's say these are by 2s, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. That's about a 10. So I've got to find a place to rate that. 10. And let's go down to, let's see, do, 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 do. again, sound effects optional. That would be 2, 4, 6. That would be about a negative 6. We're just sketching. Nothing's about accuracy right now. So if I was to do my wiggly wiggly, bing, all the way to span the distance between those, what range would I be covering? I would be covering from what to what. Now I'd like to always go from negative to positive. I like to go from my least value to my greatest because I am writing it in interval notation. So my range is going to span from negative 6 way down here all the way up to po positive, what, not 6, positive, why is that 6 there? That's confusing. <laughs> positive 10. All right, so how would I write that? <clears throat> In interval notation, I like to write range, and then I would say from negative 6 to 10. Yes, of course, you can write y. I just, you know what? I'll tell you what my deal is. If they ask me to identify the range, sometimes I like to write R to show them I found the range. Another option, and probably much, much more mathematically valid one, would do say be to say the Y, because that is what the range is. It's the Y values. So then if we were doing it in set notation, my Y would be in the middle, my little number on the left, my bigger number on the right, and my less than or equal to symbols in between. That's telling me that y's, the y values go between and including negative 6 and 10. Alright, pretty straightforward I think. The issue with anything that we do is everything takes practice. So let me show you the page before. Alright, we are being asked to identify the domain and range of the function. Now, I want you to notice something that is not an accident. Some of these um, graphs 
Well, first of all, what do you notice about them? They're all very different. Another thing you might notice about them, they curve. Some curve, some are straight. Uh, and then another thing you might not notice is they, some of them have arrows at the end. Let me identify that right there. And some don't have arrows on the end. That's not an accident. That's not whoever created this not paying attention. That is very specific. The arrow means, you know what the arrow means, going on forever, infinitely in that direction. And a solid point means stopping at that place. So you've got a lot going on. A solid interval that stops means it includes that point, whereas an open interval, that means it doesn't include that point. You go up to, but don't include. So all of that, that's going to affect whether we use a bracket or a parenthesis, a less than or less than or greater to symbol. It's not going to really affect how we identify the range or the domain. Okay. So let's just attack this head on. Let's identify the domain of this function. Okay, well, let's just take a look at it. We got a curvy function going from, it looks like four and including four, and then it's traveling outward to the left infinitely. <sighs> All right, so it's gonna go on forever in that direction. So I'm gonna cover all of the values into negative infinity. So from negative infinity, I'm coming. Oh, am I using red? Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. I don't want to screw you up. I should be using green, right? Green was the color I used for domain. So let's try that again. This is going on into negative infinity. And it's coming, 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 and it's stopping right? Because I'm only looking at my x values. It's stopping at 4. And it's including 4 also. So my domain is from negative infinity. Really sorry about the neatness. This is a little tricky with a stylus. Small space. Yikes. Trying a little better. Oh, don't my parenthesis. Wasn't thinking about that. Okay. All right. So the domain is coming from negative infinity traveling all the way to the right, stopping at positive 4. What am I doing? Stopping at positive 4, not negative 4. So if I've confused you, I apologize. I am having a little bit of a problem there. Okay, sorry. Good thing I always review. Going from negative infinity, traveling, traveling to and including the 4, which is why it's a bracket. All right, now let's take a look at the range. Range I'm going to do in red. This time I'm looking at how high. I'm gonna erase what's already here because that could be very confusing. Now, I'm gonna be looking at how high this function goes. Now I want you to think about something. This requires thought. This function is getting higher as it travels. Where's my pen? There it is, as it travels. As it continues to travel, it's gonna get higher and higher and higher. I'm, I'm elaborating here because I want you to see. It's not quite getting higher at that rate, but it's getting higher and higher and higher based on the graph that it showed me. It's continuing to get higher. If it's going to continue to get higher, is it ever going to stop getting higher if this is going to continue infinitely? No, it's never going to stop. It is going to cover all of the values into positive infinity way up here. And so the, the actual range is going to come from way up high, positive infinity, and come down, 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 and it's stopping here because that's where this is stopping. This is stopping on the axis, so I have to stop on the axis. So for the range, I am coming from positive infinity, but I have to write, this is where it gets a little bit, not tricky, but you've got to remember, I almost screwed up, I almost wrote positive infinity to 4. Remember, we go from least to greatest. And so positive infinity to 4, I'm supposed to write that I go from 4 to positive infinity. That's kind of the deal. Now, I always look back, did I do bracket or parenthesis right? No, I seem to always screw that one up. That should be a bracket because it was a solid interval. Now, worst case scenario, you put infinity to 4, 
that's not like the worst thing you could ever do. You just, you're writing it backwards. You want to maybe flip that around so it's not confusing to somebody who's reading it. So you're going from four to positive infinity. Okay, that's domain and range. And I gave you a screenshot, but I want to just tell you where I got this information. Now on your video logs, feel free to write the, uh, a couple of these down in your extension. Do a couple of these problems. Uh, but I want to tell you where to get the answers and where to get more problems like this. You may recognize this sheet, and you may not. This is called, oh goodness, what is this called, this website? It's a really good one. It's a really good one. Here it is. Boom. Magical. Uh, math worksheets for kids. Now, actually, when I found this, I realized this is one that you guys have been using. I've been walking around and seeing you having found this all on your own. Now this is, I think this is an advertisement. I, IXL is not math worksheets for kids. Um, I'm reading I'm reading what this, uh, the I, IXL only allows you to do a certain amount and then they charge you. So um, math worksheets for kids. And if you scroll down, you can actually see, I can't scroll down, this is a screenshot, but you can see where I got some of these videos. There's domain, I mean, some of the content, domain and range. There's graphing functions. There's a whole bunch more below that are just about um, functions. So when I searched and did a search for domain and range worksheets, this is what came up. And as I already know, you've already found this to be a very useful tool. Here's the algebra component. And if you look on, you're going to see plenty of stuff to help you in the future. Calculus, statistics, trig, geometry. Um, now watch out. It says the algebra. So when it says algebra, it means it's combining algebra 1 and algebra 2 together. So you, so you might find when you're practicing that some of these seem a little bit too hard. That's because they're putting all the algebra in one place. So they're calling algebra 1 and algebra 2 one uh, entity of its own. So just be careful if it gets challenging. It's, not, it's probably not you. So anyway, um, go back and do, let's go back here, back and do some of these problems. Go, please onto the uh, Math Worksheets for Kids site and check your answers because, and I should probably tell you, this one was, uh, this one was, I don't know, I don't know, did I keep what it was called? Let's see. Boom, I'm back again. This one, I just took a screenshot a little further down. This one was Domain and Range from a Graph. And don't even ask me. So sorry about this. I don't remember which section I, I picked. You'll have to find the graph that matches. But hey, you see all of these different uh, things for you to choose. Um, this one is going over ordered pairs. So if you just need practice, uh, filling in a table and deriving ordered pairs from a function. That's what that one is. Function or not a function, it gives you graphs and you're supposed to identify whether a graph is a function or isn't a function. And that's a pretty straightforward one um, that we'll talk about later. Really easy how to identify uh, whether a graph is a function or function. I'll teach you that in a future video probably. Um, graphing linear functions, you have tons of this practice uh, from workbooks that I've given you. And what they do is they give you a table and then they ask you to fill out the table and then plot the points. That's a little bit of a tedious way to graph a line, but if you don't know any other way, that's a great way to start. So there's more below, but this was relevant to what I did with you today. So I hope this video was helpful and not too confusing, but certainly I can imagine it could be, and that means you need to come with this kind of work, guys, this kind of stuff uh, to work with in your group and to ask questions in class. Until then, guys, it's Mrs. C, and I'll see you on the flip side.